Hi, my name is Ellen McKeever. I'm the paper conservator for the National Museum of Ireland. My job is to care for the paper-based collections across our four divisions, so that is art and industry in Collins Barracks, natural history in Marion Square, art antiquities in Kildare Street, and folk life here in Turlock Park. This involves preventive conservation, so protecting our objects through things like good storage and housing and control display parameters, but also interventive conservation, which is what I'll be talking about today. And this is where objects are stabilised or their conditions improved through treatment. I am one of a team of conservators working for the National Museum of Ireland, and we all specialise in different materials, like textiles, archaeology or furniture. But we all work under an overriding umbrella ethos of minimal in intervention. So we do not restore objects um, back to how they looked when they would have first been produced. Um, but our, my treatments take into account a variety of factors, including the object itself, how the public will be engaging with it. And also we try not to make any unnecessary changes to them. So the Murray collection was very interesting to me because it's 40 objects, but they date from the mid, mid 19th century to the mid 20th century. As a result of this, you've quite a wide variety of supports and media across the board. Um, you can see some examples here, a um, mid 19th century written letter, and then below that, a uh, mid 20th century um, piece of ephemera. As well as that, we had quite a few embossed stamps, which feature, feature quite a lot. And also, um, you can see in the bottom right there, the variety of media that we'd find. So we find handwritten stuff, stamps and printed media. Um, so the treatment for these objects would be for imaging, so one-off handling and legibility for um, when they're uploaded online. And again, I'm working on the under the National Museum of Ireland's conservation ethos, which is minimal intervention. So to begin with, when the objects um, were first coming into the, my studio, um, they are, have to be um, frozen as part of our quarantine procedure. So this is to ensure that no pests can get into our stores and also that if the objects are being affected by anything like um, silverfish or anything like that, that these are all killed off. So after that, they were brought into my studio and I was able to condition assess them to get an idea of how long the, the treatment would take. Um, so each of them was assessed separately, but I'm just going to go through here some of the, um, the overall condition issues that I noticed. Um, overall, the collection was in fair to good condition and this is uh, partly due to the very good care that the owners had taken of them over the years. Um, so there are things like surface dirt distortions, which you can see in the top left image there, staining, which you can see in the bottom right image there, um, and tears and areas of weakness. Now, these are quite common for objects um, of this age, but they will just affect the legibility and the stability of the objects themselves. Three objects had been laminated at a certain point. Um, I discussed this with Noel, the curator, um, and we decided not to remove the lamination at this point in time because it wasn't damaging the objects at this point. So we will check them in the future. And if they do begin to, uh, the lamination does begin to damage the objects, we will treat them then. Um, as part of my condition assessment, I also get to analyze the objects, which is um, very useful for um, getting a more in-depth look at the condition of the objects, but also gives evidence of production and gives me more, more information about the objects themselves from a materiality point of view. So you can see there in the top right, uh, that's an object being viewed through transmitted light. You can see that there's a watermark and that's Swiftbrook uh, paper mill in Sagart. And this paper mill's paper was used for printing the proclamation. It appears quite a lot throughout Irish history. And you can also see there um, the lines from when the object was produced. And that means that this object is laid paper. I was also able to undertake quite a few media tests and that's to see if the inks that are used are sensitive to water, which would affect the treatment that I would be using. Also in a few objects, I had to test to see if the iron gall ink had been used, because again, this is something that would affect the treatments that I could undertake. So now I'm just gonna talk about some treatments that I undertook on different objects to give an idea of the type of work that was undertaken on this collection. So this is F2023-282, and, and it's a certificate from 1892. Uh, so this object was in fair condition. The main issues with it are um, the tears that you can see down the bottom of the object when the object was placed um, on a transmitted light box. It became apparent that there were areas of weakness along historic folds. And then you can see there another watermark. So this object um, needed treatment to deal with some minor surface dirt, but also these tears, minor distortions, and areas of weakness that were developing. So the treatment that was undertaken for this object is um, 
involve treatments that are very common across the whole collection and paper conservation in general. So this involved cleaning the object using a smoke spon sponge um, and then the object was slightly humidified using a spray humidifier and then placed in my nipping press, which you can see there in the bottom left, that's um, an antique engineer's press. As a result of that, the object um, had any of its distortions removed and it made it easier to repair. Um, the repairs that I do throughout all the objects I use is nearly always using Japanese paper. Uh, Japanese paper is a very high quality material and is also very strong despite being very, very thin because of the long fibers used in it. So I didn't use any other materials for uh, repairs throughout this collection. This is adhered using a wheat starch paste. And again, this is a very common material across paper conservation. And in this instance, I use a specific type called Jin Shofu. So I make this up in my lab. You can see it there being produced. And um, that's it being sieved through a horsehair sieve. And then on the right, this is me applying the repairs to the object um, using just small glass weights and blotters and a barrier layer. So this is the object post-treatment. Um, it's a lot more stable and the small tears that were developing along the bottom have been repaired. So as a result, it's safer to handle, but also in the damage wouldn't be distracting from the text and the information in the object, which is what is trying to be like put across through, through the online exhibition. So this is the second object I treated. This is F2023259. It's a notice from 1872. As you can see on the left, there was an awful lot of distortions in it. This was a result of it being kept folded, which is very common for uh, legal documents from the time. Uh, you can see in the middle there, in order to unfold it, I had to use small weights even just to take a look at it. And then on the right, that's a true transmitted light. There is an awful lot of uh, areas of weakness developing, edge tears and folds. And then along the central fold there, you can see that there is a fair amount of staining as well. So one of the nice things about the condition assessment section of my job is that while you're handling the objects, you get a feel for actually what kind of treatments they would benefit from as well as just visually looking at them. So this object, I realized, would benefit from an aqueous treatment involving water. Um, because the media used in this object is non-fugitive at all, it's just printed black ink, it wasn't sensitive to water. So what I did was float wash the object on a non-woven support, which is Bondina, you can see it there in the upper left, in deionized warm water. So I gave it two runs of about 15 minutes in this little bath, and then um, and that was um, to reduce the staining, but also to strengthen the support. You can see there it's drying on a wire rack. After that, it was treated very similarly to the previous object. So it was humidified, flattened, and then repaired. And then you can see it post-treatment there, the distortions have been reduced and any tears and areas of weakness have been repaired. Um, something you can see on this here is areas of loss in historic documents. Traditionally in paper conservation from museums, they're not color matched, so you can pick them out quite easily. And um, this might be something to look out for when you go, if you're ever in one of our museums or museum internationally. And again, we are not doing restoration here, so we're not lying about the condition of the object. We just want to make it easier for the public to interpret and to stabilize it. So this is an example of when I had to go slightly further up my treatment due to the condition of the object itself. So these are two little receipts from the mid 19th century, uh, F2023-249 and F2023-250. Um, as you can see here, they're both very similar objects. And you can see on the right hand image here, the transmitted light, their paper support was in a very poor condition. And again, this is just because of their age and the materials using them. These, this is ephemera and maybe it wasn't meant to last as long as it has um, through the good care of the family that had owned them. Uh, you can see on the top right, the object is nearly disintegrating. So this object maybe wouldn't have stood up to repeated handling by um, researchers and even by people with a lot of experience with these type of objects like my curators. So in order to stabilize it for handling beyond just our imaging, I had to undertake a full lining treatment so there's a number of ways to do this. Um, the technique I use in this instance is called the wet and wet technique. Um, I learned it when I was working in the National Archives. Um, this involves um, applying a layer of thin paper to the entirety of the back of the object. In this case, um, it was between two layers of silkscreen material there and then pressing it in a smaller press overnight, a small book press. You can see in the bottom here, one of the two objects after being lined before it had been cut out. So then after that, I very carefully cut the object out of its lining. And this is F2023 post-treatment. 
as you can see there, you can't, it hasn't made too much of a difference to the object aesthetically, so you can still see that it's a small object from a very long time ago, um, that it wasn't really meant to last, but physically it's stable enough to be handled now. And you can see in the back there, the lining isn't too visible. You can still read the object number through it. So the final object I'm going to talk about now um, is an example of a blue paper object. There was a few of them in the collection and some nice embossed stamps, which I spoke about earlier on the top right, or sorry, on the top left of the object there, you can see the two red stamps. So this object had some tears and areas of weakness. Um, if I was to repair it using my normal papers, um, it would have looked a bit strange because the white or cream would have stood, stood out quite strongly against the object. So I know I said earlier that my repairs normally aren't coloured much for historic documents. In this instance, there was text on a number of the blue documents on both sides. So repairs in this way would have t uh, distracted the viewer from what was actually important about the object, which is the text. So in this case, I atoned uh, my paper repairs using washes of deionized water and golden acrylics to kind of color match the paper to something that was a lot less uh, visually disturbing. Um, so in this instance, um, I would have been working under the ethos again of the conservation department of the National Museum of Ireland with regards to our repairs, which is that the repairs should be visible if you're standing six feet or closer to the object, but um, any further than, back than that, they should be invisible. So in this instance, you can see me doing a little repairs there in the bottom middle image. And then the right, there's the object post repair. Uh, the embossed stamps, which appeared across the collection, were another issue with the treatment of this object. Um, I wouldn't have been able to put this object into a press, like some of the other objects I've been talking about, because that might have damaged the stamps. So instead, they were put between layers of felts and boards and left for a slightly longer time for kind of a gentler flattening that maintained the embossed stamps. So the treatment of these objects is the most fun part of my job. But I'm um, following this. It's very important that we record everything we've done to our objects. Um, and the way we do this is through reports. You can see an example there on the left, our conservation reports. And then these are uploaded to our collections management system, Axial and connected to the object entry in this. So this means our work is connected in with our colleagues' work from our curatorial and registration divisions. Um, these are technical documents, so they're not really interesting to people who are not conservators, but it helps to understand the history of the object and what has happened to it since it's been in the National Museum. And also any information that I'm able to gather through my analysis is in these documents as well. So it's kind of adding to our knowledge of the objects. Uh, so thanks very much. That's my presentation. If you have any questions about the treatment of the Murray papers or just paper conservation in general, please feel free to get in contact with me. My email is there. Uh, thanks very much.